You're now listening to the Chewing Ground Podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 22, I believe. Um, this is pre-filmed like two weeks in advance. We have a very special guest here. Uh, I owe her a lot, actually. And um, not only is she a competitive eater on top of the game uh, of YouTube. Oh, my God. Like so many subscribers. I can't even count. Uh, I, I dream to get that many subscribers. And on top of that, she's also uh, Miss Earth New Zealand in 2013. Everybody, Nella Zizer. Is that how you pronounce it? Hey, guys. It's actually Zizzer, but lots Zizzer. of people say Zizer. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Scissor. Zizzer. There's okay. so many people say Zizer. It's fine. Wait. So um, I, upon doing research, I only knew of you through um, Competitive Eating World. I didn't know you were Miss Earth. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's another lifetime. It was so long ago. Oh, my God. That, what's, that's eight years ago, right? Yeah, 2013. So that's a even a long time. That's crazy to even think about because you look like you're uh, so young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm actually 29 now, so not not that young. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, "What?" My cousin's 29, and you guys have the same syndrome where you guys both look like my age. I'm 24, so it's like yeah. we're on the same path so here. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Um, I have a bunch of questions for you here today. I also we're gonna do a segment where we're gonna um. Talk a little bit about like New Zealand slang, different things. Uh, yeah, this is gonna oh, be yeah. fun, just kind of to get to know you. I'm gonna check if my camera is on, just to double check though, because that's like my worst nightmare. Sweet. Okay, we're good. <laughs> cool, cool. Hey, so first of all, how has life been, and what time is it over there? Also, um, it's been pretty good. It's uh, it's twelve o'clock p.m. So during the day. When did? Um, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was say, when did you start your whole uh, YouTube career? Because it's booming. Oh, God. I think back in, like, maybe 2015, I'm pretty sure. But I was just kind of, like, wow. uploading videos here and there. And I was doing contests. And then I think I really went viral maybe, like, end of 2015, 2016. Can't quite remember. But, Wow, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. So a lot of people don't – if you're listening to this and you're a fan of mine and you don't really know Nella herself, she is – like an anomaly she can eat so much and in, in a short time too usually um and you're really 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 slim and i can yeah. I, I can <laughs> kind of relate because i can eat a lot but not even to the level of you like you eat like a ridiculous amount what's the hardest challenge you ever had oh god the hardest challenge i ever had was actually at my restaurant uh, my chef was also a competitive eater. He was actually my like arch nemesis. We used to like no compete way. against each other all the time. So that's how I hired him. And we created a challenge together. Yeah. And it was called the Chairman Bow Challenge. And it was just this insane, huge, like, you know, like Taiwanese bow. It was like this big. And it had like little Taiwanese bow, like what? around the outside, massive plate of chips, a huge 1.1 liter, like thick shake with like all these candy bars as like decoration and it was just insane like he wanted me to suffer so he also put um if you've ever had like a it's like a chinese sausage but he yeah. cooked them a lot in the oven to the point where they were really difficult to chew oh, so he no. wanted me to fail this challenge but i ended up finishing it because i oh, was like wow. i was very pressured because i was being filmed by like new zealand media as well so i was like i've got to just finish this challenge like i can't not but i just remember feeling at the end like laying down just like oh god like, i'm so full right now Oh my gosh. Wait, so you own a restaurant? Um, I used to. So I opened a restaurant called Tux and Bao mm -hmm. uh, in 2017 when I was doing pre-med. And there's now a location in Takapuna as well. So we've got two locations, but I don't run it anymore. Oh, wow. So what's your, uh, what's your main career path now? Is it just focused on YouTube? Oh, no, definitely not. I'm in my, I've just finished my fifth year of med. I just found out that I passed the year. So I've got Ooh. one more year to go and then I'll be a doctor, which is my main career path. But oh, wow. yeah, no, YouTube is always going to be like a, a side job for me because I do love YouTube. Yeah. And you would, I'm assuming you make pretty good income with the amount of uh, views that you get. Um, With the doctor stuff, you're living like my parents' dream. Like they wish that I was a doctor because I'm Asian, you know, um, that's awesome. So when did you know that you were going to be a doctor? Like how, how early? Um, uh, um, only just before I kind of like entered mid school, I growing up, like I was very dyslexic. I was terrible in the school. Oh, wow. I didn't like sit any tests or anything. I went to a very like new age school that was like, if you don't want to do subjects, you don't have to do them. So I did like a bunch of artistic stuff. Um, like I did graphic design, I did photography, I wow. did music, I did all that kind of thing. 
And um, I actually ended up not finishing high school. I only got uh, NCA level two, which is like the year before you kind of graduate in New Zealand. Uh-huh. Um, and that was purely just because I got all my credits and like creative kind of subjects. I couldn't do math. I couldn't do science. I couldn't do like anything like that. Um, and then when I was 24, I ended up going to university to do like a university entrance um, certificate type thing, which is like the year before university, but it's at a university. Um, I thought I was going to do comp sci because I was quite interested in like computer science. Uh, ended up completely changing. I met someone who was going over to a different university and doing pre-med. And I was like, oh, you know, I've always loved, like, I always loved science, but I just never felt like I was smart enough to understand it. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I ended up going over with him and we did the pre-med year together. And I ended up getting in, like, with the lowest GPA possible for <laughs> um, for general entrance because I didn't have any special schemes. So I wasn't Moldy Pacific. I wasn't a graduate. I was just like, a, you know, so I had wow. to get in with a eight eight gpa which is an eight um which okay. is like an ace okay it's like an a so not an a plus most people get like a plus to get in so i got an a and then i got like an average u mat which i think is the u it's something else in um in like american yeah stuff. yeah yeah interesting yeah. and i did really well in the interview and that's what got me in <laughs> wow so this is that's kind of inspiring for all those people who are in school right now and are, don't think that they're going to be great at anything and then you ended up g- getting on path and not only did you not know all that stuff but now you're going to be a doctor that's insane dude congratulations yeah. on uh, finishing yeah, I was your always, thank you yeah thank yeah, you. yeah. I, was always, I was always told by my teachers that i was stupid so <laughs> if you're young and you're being told by your teachers that you're stupid don't listen to them no that's true <laughs> honestly uh school to me was a joke in america i don't know how different it is from new zealand but the american system is like it's very uh what is it called uh cookie cutter it's like you're going to do this, you're going to memorize it, and then you're going to take the test. It's it's super, honestly, if it's kind of easy to, like, cheat your way around. That's kind of what I did, and I, I just scraped by, and then after that, I didn't do anything with my college profession at all. Um, So, going on to your career path in terms of YouTube and also, like, your competitive eating and stuff, when, when and where did you discover, for the first time, you're like, oh, my God, I can do this. I can eat a lot. <laughs> um I kind of grew up just being able to eat a lot like I I hated having breakfast growing up so I'd yeah. always just have like either one big meal a day or have like two like reasonable sized meals a day I wouldn't eat in the mornings mm. um so I always had like a decent capacity for food but it was when I think I was like 23 and I or 24 and my mum convinced me to go and uh like try out for the sales pizza eating competition so we had like a qualifier and i went on the i kept on saying no because i didn't want people to see me eat i was just like no no no, like i don't want to do that uh but i ended up caving on the last day at like 11 p.m at night it was like (laughs) new year's and i went with my mom and i went and i sat it and i got like a really good time and do you remember do you remember the time um I can't remember the time, but they're okay. like, I, cause you just had to eat any pizza and it's like a huge, they're like the huge, like New York style pizzas. Okay. Um, but I chose a chicken and tomato one because that one was my favorite, but you just had to eat a cheese one. And the chicken and tomato was like loaded with other stuff. And I still got like a better time than the best person got with the, just the cheese pizza. Wow. So I was like, okay, that was pretty cool. Um, so then I ended up going to the contest and I ended up beating like 19 big dudes on the day, like these huge, like both like muscly and fat and just like these yeah. tall dudes. I was like this little kind of skinny blonde girl. I ended up just destroying them. Dude, that's the thing about competitive eating. You can really be any size and it doesn't really yeah. matter. I've seen um, in person, uh, I don't know if you know her, Molly. Oh, yeah, you do know Molly. Yeah, you, I know yeah, Molly. You know yeah. Molly. I know Molly well. We've done like heaps of videos together. We're, like, really yeah. Yeah. So I actually saw her in person. So um, I, I, a long ages ago, I used to want to be in that field uh, because I can, I can eat a pretty good amount and pretty fast. Uh, I've done like restaurant challenges here and there, but I never really devoted to it. Anyways, I went to a, um, you know, Highway 55. I, I don't know if you know that brand at no, all. I don't think so. It's a chain in the South them. here that does like burgers, steaks and stuff. Um, I mean, burgers and fries, sorry. And they do an annual contest. And I think there was like two YouTubers that I really wanted to see there. It was like Eric the Electric, who was popping oh, yeah, at the time. Eric yeah, Eric is very cool as well. We used to like collab back when he he's got so many. He's got like millions now. now. We like collab when he had like none. It was well, that's gonna be you. You're gonna yeah, probably hit a million. So well. 
You're going to hit a million at some uh, point, we'll too. We'll see. We'll see. I feel like if I, maybe if I put in all my energy into YouTube, right. but because I've got, like, medicine and all the yeah. other stuff, I can't, like, put, like, 100% in. No, I get that. I Trust me. I get that because I, I just started this podcast, and, like, my energy has had to be divided, and then my main channel is suffering now, and I'm just like, ugh. Uh, but going, hopping back, uh, also, Nathan Figu uh, Figueroa, I don't know how to say his last name. He was there, too. Yeah, yeah. I know him as well. He's a nice guy. I've never awesome. met him in person, but he's very cool. That's so cool. But yeah, so that's how I discovered Molly because she whooped everyone. And I was just like, oh yeah. my, and she's Molly's tiny. Molly's insane. Like, I think Molly's probably the best competitive eater in the world, like above all the guys. Wow. She is, her, she's on level like with Joey Chestnut. I think Joey Chestnut and Molly are kind of like yeah, on neck the same neck. level. I wish, um, I wish there wasn't restrictions between like pros and like uh, private where they can actually compete together. Because yeah. you, you know about that, right? Yeah, yeah, I know all about that. It's it's kind of silly. I feel like, you know, Molly's such a good eater. You can't really put her in a contract and say you can only compete in major league eating. Yeah. Contest. You know, I, I got quite lucky because I signed with them, but they made me a deal that I could do any other contest I wanted if it wasn't in, like, the America zone, which was really good for me because I was, like, going over to Japan, Australia, oh, wow. New Zealand, like, doing contests around there. Wait, but, so yeah, for Molly, it kind of sucks. Are you still yeah. signed with them? Um, I'm not too, too sure. I do have, I, I actually don't know. I've signed two contracts with them. They're two, three year contracts. So I might still be signed with them, but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't really, because of COVID, like I can't really go over and compete anyway. Right, right, right. But yeah. Man, that's, that's always been so fascinating to me. The world of like professional, uh, eating, like I will, you know what? I, I'm, I might devote to it one day. <laughs> Just actually. Like, you should, you should. It's very fun. Like, the feeling you get when you like just finish a challenge and yeah. beat the best time is, is amazing. See, the problem that I have is I know I can compete, but I don't know if I could ever get first. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Even I could always you don't get first, though. It's still fun. Like, it's still That's fun. True. Like, I've, yeah, I've gotten to like go all over the world with competitive eating. It's so amazing. What's your favorite type of challenge and what's your least favorite type of challenge? Like, type Ooh, of food say... or any category? I've really been getting into like the spicy challenges lately because it's more I saw about, that. Yeah. I love them. It's more about just being like being able to like focus and eat it versus doing like a big quantity challenge. I'm not really a big fan of like huge quantities just because the after effects are terrible. But whereas a spicy challenge, I don't find the after effects to be that bad. That's so like I'd crazy. Do that. I was gonna say spicy will mess you up no, too though. No, like I think my body's gotten used to it. I've eaten so much of like the, if you know, like the Korean fire noodles. Like oh I've yeah. So many of those lately. It's insane. Like, I think my body's just accepted it. And I was going like, okay, to ask you. Normal, let's just process it. I was going to ask you about that. Cause I noticed that you were dabbling into the Korean fire noodles. Uh, what's, what's the most you've ever eaten? Of that? The most Korean fire noodles. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one sitting. How many packets I do? Cause I, I didn't I can't remember I've had, I know I've had 10 packets of sauce and one thing of noodles and that was insanely hot. It was oh crazy. Oh my God. It was, I drank the sauce as well. It was, uh, if you go on my YouTube, it's like one of the recentish videos. Oh, I'm going to watch it. that after this. But yeah, that was, it was, it was hot, but I think if you have that much sauce, it becomes almost so hot that it becomes sweet in a way. <laughs> and it like, it burns, but yeah. it doesn't burn as badly. Yeah. And then afterwards it hits you once you get a little bit of air in your mouth and the oxygen starts like activating all the. Yep. Yep. And then it's like, oh, it's horrible. That's but, the yeah. trick. Like it, whenever I eat it, I have to eat it as fast as possible. Cause yeah. then. And don't breathe. Don't breathe. Cause right. oxygen makes it worse. <laughs> and water can sometimes make it worse too. Cause it just water moves makes it, it around. worse as well. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I did. um, oh my, It was like one of my first videos on YouTube and it, it surprisingly got pretty good views for my for my standards, but I did a two Korean fire noodles in like one minute, and I did it so well. I feel like I could do like a couple more, like maybe three or yeah. four. Also, go for it. <laughs> also, thank you so much. You uh, were one of the few people who had more clout and more followers than me, but were was willing to collaborate, which is like so awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because no, I love I love doing collabs, especially with like in the same when I did a collab with like Eric, like it's really cool to collab with someone and then like see them go on and do really well. Yeah. yeah. And then be linked up. And like, that's how I feel about you, too, because uh, when we met you, you grew even more. And then also, like, I, I can see if once you have more time, I can see your channel also booming up even more from there. And uh, yeah, hopefully, 
fingers crossed. It's it's like lately it's been going off like going crazy. As soon as I started uploading the spicy videos, I've been getting like my views of like I think like there are ten times as much as they were prior to that, which is crazy. And my subscribers are going up like nuts right now at the moment, which is pretty cool. One thing you could invest in, uh, taking a note from Mr. Beast, who is like the god of YouTube, is um I don't know how expensive it would be, but if you could hire someone to do subtitles for you or like uh what is it called when they like voice over your talking pretty much whatever you say but in their yeah. languages like if you could do that in korean and, and indian that would get you yeah. so many more view views because those spicy videos yeah, I've are had big people, i've had people comment on that especially i think a few like korean people have commented saying oh you should get like a korean person to like do subtitles for exactly you. um so are you are you big in the world of asian food i'm assuming I love Asian food. Like, honestly, my favorite food in the world is Japanese food. Really? I absolutely love it. everything about it, yeah. And I quite like Korean food as well. And obviously with my restaurant, I did, like, um, Taiwanese bao. So, I lo yeah, I love Asian food. That's awesome. What's your yes, Okay, what's your favorite, like, Asian dish? Oh, that's quite difficult because there's so many different kinds I like. Like, if I was going to eat something every day, I'd say something like sushi or sashimi. Ah. But I also love, like, I love, like, a really nice ramen. Yeah. Okay. I'm well, absolutely obsessed with ramen. But, yeah, I like I like most, like, Asian dishes, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> if, you're, um, if you're ever in the States, uh, let me know. And I'll, I'll – well, especially around my area because then I have a guy who caters sushi. And it's so good. Oh, oh. And it's like, it's homemade. I that, yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I, I only yeah. eat from him now. Unless like I'm at like a really fancy place somewhere. Have you gone to the States much? Um, I've been there, I think four times now. Cause I'm actually an American citizen as well. What? As a New Zealand citizen, so I'm Wait, born. how does that work? Okay. So my mom was born in America. She uh, came over to New Zealand when she was a teenager but because she's never, she was always just an American citizen and just like a permanent resident here. Um, so my dad's New Zealand, my mom's American, and my mom took me over to America when I was a baby to get like an American born abroad birth certificate. So wow. now I've got citizenship there, which is nice. So you're technically half American, like in a way. Yeah. Wow, that's you know, My family, I don't know if you can tell by my accent, but like I was raised by my American side of my family. So my accent's like mostly American and New Zealand people can really tell. But then if an American person talks to me, they can't really like pick it up. They just hear like the New Zealand words. See, I can, um, I, you will obviously New Zealand, uh, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, your guys' uh, native language is American. I mean, English, right? Um, our native language is actually Maldi. Oh, but really? English is kind of like what, what took over, yeah. I didn't know that. I Googled it, and it said English, so I was just like, okay. Maybe that's why she speaks so well. Yeah, but then that, that's, what, that's what England wants you to think. <laughs> oh, yeah, that does make a lot of sense. That makes – now yeah. it makes a lot more sense as to why you, you're so fluent and why you're just, like, with up-to-date with lingo and stuff. Are, do, you, do you find it hard to keep up with slang in American – like, American slang versus New Zealand slang? Uh, not really because I think like I watch like a lot of American YouTubers and I think oh. like half the stuff I watch is probably from America so wait so you've been to I America four, you've been to America four times and yeah. uh where did you go those four times oh so the most memorable time I went on like a road trip around like all of southern America it was absolutely amazing like uh went all through like Louisiana um my favorite place was probably what I like the most. Um, I love Texas. Like, really? loved it. Yeah. Wow. New Orleans was really cool. Um, I actually really like like Houston. Like, that's where I flew into, and that's where I did like a Nathan's famous hot dog qualifier. I saw. And that. I actually loved it. Like, I thought it was amazing, and all the like the barbecue around there and stuff. Wow. Um, and then I've also been to New York a couple of times. I love New York as well. But I I went during like, both times. I went during like Fourth of July weekend, so it oh. was really warm. Yeah. There wasn't that many people around because a lot of people were away on holiday and stuff. Yeah. So it wasn't very busy. And I was like, oh, yeah, I really like it. I, I could totally live here. <laughs> and then um, been to L.A. as well. I, okay. really, I quite liked L.A., but I didn't like all the traffic and how, like, far away everything is from each yeah. like, place. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That's surprising. That uh, Usually a lot of people who are um, not native to America, they usually say that New York, L.A., those are your favorite places instead of the oh, South. Oh, no, like I love like Southern America. Oh, like, I gosh. love like Texas and stuff. It's just everyone there is so nice and like really cool. And that is very true. Fun. Like 
such a good experience. I'm from North Carolina, which is like uh, we're considered the South, but we're kind of like in the middle. So we have a little bit of both, but mainly Southern stuff. So if you're ever in this area, let me know. And me and um, Lauren, my girlfriend, can take you out because uh, oh, we yeah, have some very good keen. we have some good barbecue here and we can do a challenge, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm definitely keen for that. Yeah, you'd probably beat me. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you're into spicy foods now. And you're, you said your least favorite is like the really, really a lot of food kind of thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you find it harder to eat meat foods or carbs? Probably, I'd say meat things are a lot harder. I feel yeah. like carbs are a lot easier to kind of like get down quickly. That's how I feel too. Um, I did a, I did a burger challenge at a restaurant once and it was like the, well, actually I, I crushed it, but like the meat part was the only <laughs> thing that held me back. Humble. <laughs> right, right, right. I, that one was really easy. Like, dude, you would you would destroy it. Like, not even like if I could. And I, the crazy thing is, I didn't even prep for that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you can prep for certain things. Yeah, I didn't. I don't, I don't believe prepping for things. I think prepping for stuff actually puts you off. No I don't prep for way. Anything. So you I just it makes go you up? tired or something. You know? Yeah, I I don't do any kind. Like back when I first started. I used to kind of try to practice for things. Yeah. Like, especially Nathan Samus hot dog eating contest. Yeah. I reckon that it's actually smarter just to go in there and just, you know, otherwise you get sick of the food. You get really sick of it and you You're just don't want to eat it. Like, I feel like if I'm hungry for it, I want it more, you know? So how, okay, how I dabbled into prepping is um, whenever I did like, uh, I, I did like a sushi challenge not too long ago with a couple friends and stuff, cer certain things like that. Um, I, I found it off of Randy Santel's page, uh, one of the big eaters of the world. Uh, and yeah, no, I've met Randy. He came. He actually came to my restaurant. We did like a challenge together, what? and then he did the Chairman Bow Challenge that I talked about before. And he actually couldn't complete it in the same amount of time as me. Wow. So he just like kind of quit. He had like a little bit left, and he just like he quit. That's he did well. Like, amazing. and then he he beat me when we did like our we did it against um Mitch as well. I don't know if you know Mitch, his friend that like used to do. He used so. to before before he started um before he got into a relationship. Mitch used to like follow him around. They used to like do all their like challenges wow. together. Wow. Yeah. So uh wow, that's so crazy that you knew him. But yeah, he has a page called Food Challenges or whatever dot com or and yeah. I went on to that. Yeah, I've seen it. And I saw how he preps, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna try this, and it makes sense like expanding your stomach and stuff. But what you said also makes sense because I feel like it's also a mental game. And if you prep yeah, I for something. I reckon it's 90% mental game. Oh, man, I reckon. I'm going to start doing that then. Because I do, Um, whenever I, I did compete on like restaurant challenges and stuff, I would do uh like just OMAD, which is just one meal a day. And then yeah. just eventually just hop into it. But that's interesting. So do you, are you on OMAD or any specific diet right now? Intermittent fasting? No, I just basically I eat when I'm hungry. Wow, you are literally living like every female girl's dream and some guys too. You get to eat whenever, stay skinny, and you get to eat a lot on those challenges. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what's uh what's one field of food that you haven't dabbled in that you would love to? Ooh. Yeah. I feel like I've tried most things. Really? I don't know. I'm not too sure. Let me, let me think as well. Um you've you yeah. I'm I'm scared. I feel like I've done like almost every kind of food, and I don't <laughs> think that there's much that I haven't how done. About, how about like, have you done a raw raw challenge where you do a lot of raw food, like sashimi? Uh, no, oh yeah, I've done a um, I did a not a sashimi challenge, but a nagiri challenge, which is just like rice and okay, okay, sashimi on top, which was nice. I liked that. That was fun. Yeah, because you like sushi. But yeah. What's your? Yeah, I could definitely do like a whole plate of like raw fish. I'd definitely do that. Dude, I'm telling you, if you're in North Carolina, that can be the challenge we do together. I have the guy <laughs> Sweet, who's the caterer. He could just hook it up. Um, but hopping back, uh when you what's the most weird or disgusting food you've ever eaten? Oh, hands down when I was in Thailand, I ate a whole tarantula. It was what? disgusting. I didn't put it on YouTube. I did a video in the same place. I don't know if you see my scorpion video. I ate like I, I think not. it was ten scorpions. Like deep fried scorpions. I didn't know that. Um, but I had later on that night. I had a tarantula, and it was very hairy. And I just, it was. I was a little bit drunk at the time because it was like Thailand, like Koh San Road. Right. Um, but I ate it, and I, and I filmed myself eating it. But I just couldn't even bring myself to put it on YouTube. It was oh, so disgusting. Oh my god! Wait, did you do it? Like, was it deep fried? Like, what was it? 
It was oh. deep fried, but it was very hairy. Like it had a lot of hair on it. Like the, oh. all of its hair was still on it. And that's the thing that grossed me out the most. I kind of want to do the it. Scorpions. The scorpions were tasty. Really? I haven't they're had scorpions. They're just like deep fried and coated in MSG. So of course they're going to be good. <laughs> Have you ever had a uh, balook? What was that? Ba- uh, yes. Is that the little the little uh, egg? Chicken? Yeah, the yeah, little. Yeah, when I was the... in, when I was over in the Philippines for okay. Miss Earth, we tried it. I wow! It. Oh, you hated it. I was gonna say you're really cultured. That wow! No, I didn't like it. You know what's I funny? I couldn't get over, I couldn't get past the feathers. I don't like fur or feathers on things. Oh. It freaks me out. Because you ate it in the Philippines, they do it. They do it different yeah. than my culture. I'm Vietnamese. I was born in Vietnam, and um, our culture does that too. However, ours isn't as so like theirs is like later in the fur or what is it called yeah so there's more feathers there's feathers <laughs> ours doesn't have feathers at all however yeah. you do i think i might like it I, I think i would like it if it didn't have any feathers or like a sign of a noticeable beak i'd be, be, be cool no you it. don't see any beak but you do see like a okay, little yeah, embryo are you okay with seeing oh, yeah it? i think i need it then yeah you know, happy about it. it's funny because the episode before this one it hasn't aired yet uh well while we're filming this we actually the first thing we did was we ate baluk because <laughs> people were saying how gross it was and i was like dude this thing is so good but i get it you're, yeah, you're i mean people think things are gross but it's just like it's just like a matter of like culture and what you've like grown up with in terms of if you're gonna think it's gross or not kind of i i agree however i feel like there's some some certain foods that are just objectively gross like just like taste wise, I well actually, it's kind of messed up if I say it because there there are obviously people who eat this, but this there's this thing called chicatanas. I think I'm pronouncing it right. It's a uh, Mexican, and it's these specific ants, and it's just their butts. And uh yeah yeah, it's really strange. I had a, a Mexican friend when I was in elementary school, and he uh he was like like giggling and was like just try this and they they had like a bag full so i like tried it and it tasted really bad like it just tasted bad it wasn't even about like it's like deep fried it's like a little crunchy like deep it, fried yes it is fried i don't know if it's deep fried but it's definitely fried cuz it's crunchy but yeah. the taste of it was I just not good i can get behind that <laughs> <laughs> you're Chuck bold. Some MSG on it. Chuck right. Some MSG on it. I'll eat it. <laughs> so you're really um you're really really adventurous with food. That's yeah, I like trying new things. Have you ever had a live octopus, like the tentacles, like the moving ones? No, I haven't. <laughs> I really I'm, I'm, I'm very against, I would never eat an animal that's still alive. That's something that I just wouldn't do. It's not alive, technically. It's like chopped just off, it. it's just still moving. Because apparently like their oh, yeah, nerves yeah. are still going and stuff. So yeah. I want to try doing that, but I'm kind of scared. Yeah, I've definitely had, I've had octopus quite a lot, like, um... Mm-hmm. Especially when I've had like Japanese food and Korean food, I've had octopus. Wow, nice. Uh, wait. So you have you've been to Japan, right? You said yeah, a few times. Yeah, I was uh, flown awesome. over there. For all experiences. It was so cool. Like I love Japan. I love everything Japanese. Like I'm, you can see my Pokemon. I know. I was gonna there. ask you about that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So I love I love Japan. I just think Japan culture is so cool, and I love their food. Uh, I was actually contacted by like a TV company over there, no two way. different occasions, like two different TV companies. So I've been over there twice and all expenses paid to do like these different like TV shows. And it was just so much fun. And they're like the nicest people ever. I had each time I had like um, basically people who were like uh, taking me places and like following me around and they're like translating for me. And wow. it was so cool. Wait, so you're telling me that you're on a Japanese television show? Yeah, what? two of them. One was, one was like against this girl who's like a big competitive eater over there. I forgot her name, but she's so she's so tiny. She's probably ten kgs less than me, a and little bit tiny. shorter than me. She's she is she's so small. Wow. And I I beat her by just like half a burger, but she she could have kept going. Like I was like, oh my god, like our time because our time limit went off, and I'm just like, oh god, like I gotta stop because I was going really like fast and I was feeling a bit sick. Uh. And I was a little bit ahead of her and like she could have kept going for another like hour or so like she was fine which is just insane wow dude that's so crazy to me that's so cool that you got to fly out to that would you say that's like the coolest opportunity you've gotten off of youtube and you're like you're definitely yeah definitely wow. I, I just i had such a good time like i got to like walk around and see all the temples and stuff and just yeah it was insanely cool i wish i no i i don't wish i hope that i get to the point where um 
that can be an opportunity because I've had opportunities with like LA and stuff like that. But Japan is a whole nother game. Like I've never been yeah. to Japan. That would be insane to me. That's oh, awesome. you'd love it. Like it's honestly like the people there are so nice. It's just insanely cool. Like if I if I was not so dyslexic and I felt like I could learn a language, I would definitely move there. You're also uh I mean not to like just being realistic, you're also kind of the ideal person that Japanese people would portray. Because um I don't know if you know this, but like Asian culture they, they like, love, like, white blonde people. And yeah. really white. Like, you have to be not yeah. just, like, tan white. You got to be, like, white. Like, my girlfriend's yeah. really, really pale. Perfect. Like, because the, uh, they aspire to be white. I don't know why. Not the guys, just the girls. It was really yeah. weird. It's kind of silly, like, because I would rather be a bit more tan. Because, like, if I go in the sun, I get burnt. Like, <laughs> That's how it always is. Like, you always want what you yeah. can't have, you know? Yeah. I'm I, very jealous. My mom is very tan because she's got, I don't know what she's got in her. She's got, like, a big mix of things from America. But she's very, like, olive and very, very tan. Wow. My dad is very pasty, and I just, I got his skin color, sadly. <laughs> Where's, um, what state is your mom from? Do you know? Um, she was born in Miami, but she mostly... What? Um, where'd she live? She, she lived like, they basically, they had a trailer and they'd go around, they'd live everywhere. She even lived in Mexico for a few years as well. Whoa. She sounds like she had a wild life. <laughs> but my family's from Mississippi. Like my Nana's, my Nana's mom was born in Mississippi. Okay. Wow. Okay. So you're a Southern like rooted girl anyways. Yeah. That's, maybe that's why I liked it so much. Yeah. <laughs> that's so awesome. You're rare though. That's rare. Cause a lot of people, uh, you know, they like the big, 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 big cities only and not like, you know. All the small oh, no, I prefer Southern, like, New York was amazing. Like, I do admit it was amazing. Yeah. But I'd rather live in, like, Texas. So your ideal... Well, not right now. Not right now, actually. After yeah. all the, <laughs> the COVID. Uh, abortion laws and stuff oh. no, and all the COVID shit. Oh, my God. No, the I don't abortion want to now. <laughs> Dude, that is... That's the one of the wildest things. How does... Uh, and I, I'm not trying... I'm not a political guy. I try not to make my stuff political ever. But that's, like, objective. Like, how do you even consider that, like, not a right... <laughs> For women, yeah, Dude, uh, so it's crazy. Time. Like I don't understand how they were able to do that. It's how nuts. is uh New Zealand's like? I, I you know I know to, if I'm being honest, I know barely anything about New Zealand. I know that you're from New Zealand. I know that like a, <laughs> one of my basketball players that I like um is from New Zealand. What's his name? Uh, he plays for what? Steve? Steve, Steve Adams. Steve, Steve Adams. Adams. Yeah. yeah, he's a legend. I only know that because my boyfriend loves basketball and his flatmates. Really? Every time I go, oh, yeah, we watch like the basketball and stuff. Yeah, you guys have. Uh, I actually, know that otherwise. <laughs> yeah, you guys actually have a, a basketball culture and stuff. But yeah, so tell me about like besides because I don't know much about New Zealand culture at all. Um, is things different yeah. there politically and also culturally? Like just normally. Um, Culturally, like we've got, obviously we've got like kind of the English culture, but we've also got Maldi culture as well. And it's kind of like, it's a nice mix between those. And it's just like, everyone's, mostly everyone's very friendly. Mm -hmm. I think we're very like politically, we're like, most people are kind of left, like kind of left neutral. Okay, right, right, right. Which is nice. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty, it's a pretty good place to live, like politically. What's your guys' like, healthcare everyone, like? Is it free? Or? Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's free with co-payment. So it's kind of like Canada's, but it's it's slightly not quite as good as Canada, but most things are covered. Okay. Um, if it's like tr secondary or tertiary care, so like hospital care, um, ACC, like accidents and stuff, but then you pay for like a general um, practice visit so, and uh, prescriptions are free as well. So do doctors get paid well? With that. Yeah, so the government subsidizes it all. So oh, doctors nice. don't get paid as well as they would in like America. So yeah. they're, they're on a lot less, but they still get paid very well, and they don't have to deal with being sued and stuff like that because oh, the government yeah. kind of protects them. Wow, our 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 system's really uh, messed up now because yeah, I can't live in America because I'm gonna be a doctor. And I yeah, know that, like. <laughs> well, our system's messed up mainly because, like, with healthcare, and especially because you're in the field or going to be. Um, yeah. The, the problem with our system is that we're in the middle and we're not deciding one or the other. Yeah. The, it's thing, like, the problem with you guys is you actually pay more per person mm -hmm. a year than we do and than Canada does. I think you guys are, like, the top payers in the, in yeah. the world, yet nothing's covered and everyone kind of has to pay out of pocket for stuff, which is absolutely insane. The pro I think that... Well, if we adopted your guy's system, it would be a little bit too late for us to adopt it, and it wouldn't work well for a couple years, like years. And we would have to keep it for a long time. Now, I think that the best route is to make it a complete free market for America, just for America, because we're in this system where the government regulates it, 
but they're not subsidizing it like or anything but they're regulating it so like for me instant uh in living north carolina i have to go under one specific brand which is so annoying instead of yeah, having like, that's choices. only because you have insurance like imagine if you didn't have insurance then you wouldn't be able to get any health care except for stuff you're paying full price for that's true. i honestly think health care should just be free like universal free health i agree i think, that that would, I, I think it should it, it, it should be considered to be a human right and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I think it would actually, and like realistically, it would be a lot cheaper because you'd be cutting a lot of admin out of healthcare. Yeah. And I think that most countries would actually be paying a lot less if they made everything free. That's good getting it from a future doctor's perspective too. <laughs> oh yeah, so speaking of all that stuff you got in the background there, uh, what's your favorite Pokemon? Oh, my favorite? All oh, time, all damn. time. All time. I love Chikorita. Like Chikorita because when wow. I was playing the games and stuff, Chikorita would be my starter for like a few of them. So I just that that's like the I've played all the Pokemon games actually. I was just playing Dude. Pearl, just, Wait, do you have Pokemon? <laughs> that's actually my boyfriend's this is my boyfriend's one. Shout I've got like boyfriend. a white OLED one. But, nice. Um, this do you, my boyfriend's I'm borrowing it. Do you play uh <laughs> do you and your boyfriend play uh Pokemon Unite? What was that? Pokemon Unite. Have you played that yet? No, we haven't played that. What? It's free. Hop on it. All right, I don't know if it's free for the Switch, but send, it's... Send, send, me a, send me a link. Okay, I'll send it to you it. after this podcast, and then uh, we if you can get, like... I think it's just level 6. It's really easy. Um, Then you can play with uh Ranked, and then you can play with me and, like, my everybody. Oh, um, very cool. Yeah, I love Pokemon. I'm absolutely obsessed. Like, I, it was basically my childhood, like... Oh, yeah. 100%. Obsessed. Have you ever played, like, League of Legends? Or anything like that. I, I I have my my boyfriend is very into League of Legends, the team fight tactics version, oh, which is like okay. the kind of chess chess yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, I've played it a couple times. Not really something that I enjoy. So Pokemon Unite is that same system, but with Pokemon okay. and like it's a little bit different. But just just is warning you. Like the is it more like the original League? Original or like League. Team fight tactics? Okay. Orig it's like that style of game where it's like there's five people against five people and there's lanes and then there's uh, oh, Pokemon nice. that you battle. But it's just funner because it's Pokemon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've never heard of that. But yeah, I'll oh check it out. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so yeah, you would enjoy it. But yeah, Chikorito, great Pokemon. I also uh, chose that in all of like Emerald and like the Pokemons that has that as an option. Um, that's a, I feel it's like... so cute. It's such a cute Pokemon, I reckon. <laughs> well, to me... If I pick that one, it's more for me to get Blaziken because, like, that's oh, the okay. one I like. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm more of, like, the last evolution, like, Charizard and stuff. I always chose Fire, though. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. That, did you yeah, ever I watch... Choose, I think... What was that? No, go ahead. You finish first. I, th I always used to choose Squirtle in, really? like, the first game. Wow, so you would switch it up. I just stayed consistent with fire, like whatever the fire one was. I always, I always changed. <laughs> That's awesome. Whatever was cuter. I just picked the cutest one. I think I had a feeling. That was how I decided. I had a feeling. So you don't like like uh any of like the ugly ones like Gengar and. Oh no, I like the. I th I reckon all the Pokemon in like the first like maybe two first two generations are yeah. all very cute. Yeah. And then as time goes on, they get less cute. I don't know if it's just because, like, I'm very, like, nostalgic about those, like, generations. Yeah. But I feel like they're cuter. And they've got less things going on. And then as time goes on, they've got, like, more stuff on them. And they get less cute. And Wow. It's crazy because you're a 90s kid, too. So, like, we really grew up upon that. Uh, other than Pokemon, what other, yeah. like, shows or things did you used to watch? Uh, I was obsessed with card captors. I don't know if you've ever watched what that. What is that? It was, like... Uh, it was like this show, this girl called Sakura, and she had this little, um, I think it was like a, a rat or okay. like a little flying, like it was a lion, but it, then it was small and it looked more like a rat um, called Kira Barros. And there was like these magic cards where she like had to like capture them. It was like card captors. And oh, I was just okay. absolutely obsessed. Like it was my first like Halloween costume that like I made. I made like a big like wand from it and I like, dressed up as her. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, so this I was is obsessed some, with it. This is some deep Asian stuff right here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so that was on just normal TV when I was growing up in New Zealand. That's sick. Because wow. we didn't have anything like special. I just watched it on like the normal channels. Wow. But I was obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. Dude, during that time period, all those shows were so good. Like, did you see Spirited Away? Have you yeah, ever seen that? Yeah, oh my god, classic! That's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, no, I love that uh, Studio Ghibli. I love Studio. Oh, Ghibli. you know, I need to watch more of their movies. I heard that like all of them are hits. Um, yeah, but, watch um Porco Rosso. That one's really good. Hold on, yeah, that's my list. What is it? Pork. Porco Rosso. Ross. That one's very good. Okay, and I see it. 
Yeah, they're all good. Like all the ones I've watched from them have been pretty. Oh, good. this one looks amazing. The fact that there's a pig that flies. Oh, yeah, this is, this is. It's very good. Dude, were you ever scared of Spirited Away growing up? Like when you watched it, I was a little. No, I scared. think when I first watched it, I was like, I was probably in my twenties, so no. Oh <laughs> shit! I'm really young. <laughs> Wait, we're only five years apart. I think. Yeah, I didn't watch yeah. it when it first came out. I watched okay. it like way later <laughs> wow so okay hopping back to the food topic real quick what is new zealand type of like what is new zealand's signature oh, foods definitely i'd say fish and chips 100 really? it's very similar to england yeah and pies people love like mince and cheese pies here fish and chips um you're gonna like hate steak. me because mm -hmm. <laughs> i i just like very classic like meat and, and three veg kind of you know oh. that's that's very kiwi i don't really like mince pies I'm gonna be honest. Oh really? I just I didn't I didn't growing up. I hated them growing up, and now I actually if it's a good quality mince pie, mm -hmm. it's like a good baker. I love them. Well, but I'm more into like I've been getting these pork belly pies, ooh. which are really nice. It's kind of got like a not sure what's in it, but it's very like Asiany tasting. But then it's in like a pie. <laughs> Dude, I I can get with that. I feel like I could get with that. Well, uh, and you... a good butter chicken pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about like, do you, it's such a crazy concept to me because you know how America, like everything is gluttonous and like just fried and everything, but I'm thinking about meat pies and I'm like, bro, that's like the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are big on like, you guys have your own cheese, right? Like New Zealand cheese. Like, that. Oh yeah. New, people in New Zealand love like wine and cheese. Like wine and cheese is huge here because there's so many like wow. companies, like small kind of companies that create like cheese and wine and. It's very big here. Is it good? Like the cheese, compare it to like um, yeah, other no, cheeses. I, I don't, I've only really had a little bit of cheese in America and New Zealand cheese is like way better. I, I believe that. there's lots that. of different types as well. There's so many different types, like varieties of cheese. Have you had cheese in like Italy or have you been to Europe yet? No, but my boyfriend's Italian. So I really want to go to Europe soon. Like when COVID kind of ends. <laughs> Dude. Um. Oh yeah, that's right. Because New Zealand's really like uh, your guys' COVID and travel rules are very rigid. Yeah, so right? I'm, I'm, I've got, I've had three vaccinations now. So hopefully I can have my booster a couple of days ago. Wow. Um, I only have my original like two vaccines that you need. Uh, but um, with Europe, I I just recently got back from there. And Italy is one of the coolest places ever. But if you guys go up there, if you have any free time, make sure you guys try to stop by the, one of the islands of Greece, like Santorini or yeah. um, Mykonos, because it is out of this world. Like, it doesn't even yeah, look like we're on Earth. That's somewhere that my mom's always wanted to go. Like, she's always talked about how cool it would be. So, yeah, I really want to go there. My boyfriend was born in Florence, so. No way. My girlfriend's there right now. She, oh, uh, really? Yeah, she's studying abroad there. Oh, my gosh. So, he's already going to know where to go and stuff. But I highly, highly recommend you guys get tickets to the um the top of the Duomo. So, the Duomo is, like, this massive church, like, the biggest thing in the world. Like, your, your mind's going to be blown when you see it. And then if you get the tickets. Yeah. You, you step up like 500 and something stairs, which is like miserable, but then the view is like out of this world. You guys, you yeah, guys would love Florence. Cool. No, no, no. Dude, Florence would be insane. Do you like Italian food though? Oh, I love Italian okay. food. Like, I love, like, oh yeah, I love pastas. I love pizza. Is there any Italian. foods that you don't like <laughs> besides tarantula? Ooh, I, oh, I, I absolutely hate aniseed. So, like, liquor, black licorice. Um, I oh. hate raisins and I hate. I say I hate every kind of dried fruit except for apricots. So no. I don't like sultanas. I don't like, and I hate coffee. I hate coffee. What is, what? But that's you're, it. Like, I, I don't hate many things. Like, it's only a few things. You're like one of the, like, uh, most unique people I've ever met. What? <laughs> you eat everything. You've eaten a trash, like, you've eaten scorpions. But, you know, I hate coffee. <laughs> so you don't drink any caffeine? Yeah, no, I hate it. Like, uh, I drink like a lot of energy drinks like i absolutely love energy drinks and okay. like coke so okay yeah. so, i drink a lot of coke no sugar vanilla is my favorite okay what's your favorite energy drink oh there's this one called monster but it's not like the monster cans it's like a it's more like if you've had like powerade or gatorade oh. it's more that kind of and it's sugar-free and it's like really nice interesting but yeah but i really like powerade and gatorade and stuff too as long as it's like the sugar-free version i never drink like full sugar ones wow so okay okay so all right wow that's crazy so you don't you don't like that also going hopping back to the dried fruits you've never had have you ever had dried mango 
Oh yeah, no, I like dried mango. Okay, as I was long as it's say. like a like dried apricot, dried mango. There's like if it's if it's if it's like a prune or a sultana or a raisin, I don't like it. But if it's like more towards like an apricot or mango, then I'll eat it. Very specific. <laughs> uh, that's that's so fascinating. A lot of people don't like raisins, and I don't get the hate for them. They taste awful. They're, they're like they're like these little kind of mushy. Like the the taste is so so sweet, but it's not like a nice sweet. It's like a. Ugh. Sweet. What my boyfriend I've... likes raisins and he like he keeps he like puts them in his porridge and stuff and i'm just like oh, this is, this i feel like me and your good. boyfriend would just get along we just like start hanging out because <laughs> i go to movies <laughs> he also I... loves coffee if you like coffee <laughs> i have a i have a brand deal with a co- like a coffee chain so like yeah oh, i damn. freaking love coffee i actually just bought um like i i spoil myself during christmas and i'll buy myself little presents off of like black friday oh yeah you guys uh you guys do you guys even do Black Friday or Cyber Monday? Yeah, so we we do. We did it. I think we did it on did we do it on Thursday. I can't remember. We we did have Black Friday last week. I went shopping and got like a bunch of stuff for Christmas. Yeah, so but I, I don't think it's as like crazy as like American sales. Yeah, it well, it's it's like crazy here. And this year it was a lot different because of COVID and like the, as of last year. And then this year, like Black Friday was like it was confusing. Like you don't know where it's actually open and where it's not. And then there's like a there was a local shooting near at one of my malls that's like a big mall and i was just like oh god and like yeah i don't ever go shopping out anymore i just kind of yeah. order stuff just online. don't go out just order everything online yeah i'm like pretty much a homebody at this point um yeah when you and your uh boyfriend what's your boyfriend's name sorry giovanni Gio- what what an italian name very italian <laughs> giovanni giovanni if you're listening to this you guys come to north carolina we're gonna take you guys out on a very fun double date <laughs> But, <laughs> okay, so um, with every wait, wait, when did you guys meet? Um, Random, like a couple years ago, I think just over like two years. Oh uh, yeah, just over two years ago. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so hopping back to what I was gonna ask is holidays there different than here? Um, you know? it's probably not as like intense as America. I think Americans definitely like make a bigger deal about holidays. Yeah, but they do. Christmas <laughs> is like pretty big here. Wow. Okay, so uh, do you guys have any specific holidays that we don't? Oh, you know, is there like a New so. Zealand day? Nah, uh, I'm sure there is, but there's like an Auckland day and a New Zealand day, but I don't think anyone really does anything for it. Okay, wow. So you you lived in New Zealand your whole life, right? Yeah. So I was born in Christchurch, which is like down the South Island, and now I live up in Auckland, which is like the main city up in the North Island. Wow. Is you guys only get like warm weather down there? Uh, no, it gets very cold and raining, but it just depends. Like during summer, it gets pretty hot, and then winter is pretty cold. And if you're in the South Island, you get like snow and stuff. Well, the South Island gets snow. Oh, I get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're further away from the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of yeah. where New Zealand is, like on the map right now. <laughs> That's so. It's, it's off. A, it's not on a lot of maps. <laughs> is it? Ex- take us out. Yeah, if you look at a lot of maps, we're just not there. <laughs> <laughs> that does make a lot of sense. Do you? Uh, is it expensive to live and like to travel to New yeah. Zealand? I think because it's so far away, it's pretty expensive. Like it's it's really far away from everything. Mm-hmm. But yeah. living in there, like how's food living, and everything? Um, it's it's pretty expensive. Like recently, I think because of COVID and stuff, everything's gone up. Wow. I'd say it's like it's pretty up there, especially like housing and stuff. Like it's very expensive. Okay. Um, do you, yeah. Do you guys have your own currency? Um. Yeah, New Zealand dollar. Okay. I, if I'm gonna go out. Let's let's do this in terms. All right, let's say I'm going out and I buy a, a bowl of ramen or something like a, just yeah. a normal dish. How much is that going to be? Yeah. So a uh, typical like bowl of ramen is about anywhere between eighteen dollars and like twenty four dollars, depending on like what toppings it has and stuff like that. We're talking eighteen dollars, your dollars, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's like thirteen dollars or twelve twenty nine is what it says on here. That's that's pretty similar to us. I guess. Yeah. I People think. say that America's cheaper, but like if you kind of convert it, it's about no. the same, I think. We're only cheaper if you're uh in a small, small town or you find yeah. like the hidden gems. Like New York surprisingly has a lot of food that's cheap though. So New York City. Yeah, it definitely does like street food and stuff. It's very cheap there. Oh my gosh. Their pizza, the best pizza you can get in the world is like two dollar fifty cent pizza there. Or like a dollar fifty. Yeah. It's it's really crazy. Yeah, I, had, I think I had a slice for like it was like a dollar that was like right next to like um like the square. Yep. Yeah. 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 I know that and area. It was, Times Square. It was 
super cheap and oh, it was yeah. just really, really good. They do a lot of pizza for a dollar dollar. Well, now it's a dollar fifty that I noticed because of you know, yeah. inflation and stuff. But their pizza is so good. Um what's what is your favorite town to eat in? Like if we're talking pure food. In in America or in the world. In the world, uh oh, definitely definitely like Tokyo. <laughs> oh, that's so unfair that you got to go yeah. there. That's so cool. <laughs> Whenever I think of Tokyo, I think of Tokyo Drift. Have you ever seen that movie? Yeah. <laughs> I just think of yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> just like, okay. Um, I am let me see. I'm look I have a little like list of notes on things I was gonna ask you. I think I got everything. Um Do you have anything you want to talk about, by the way? Um, I can't think of anything. I feel like we've covered quite a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, and just so you guys know, her Instagram is at Nella and your last name is don't tell me. Scissor. 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 Yes, I got it right. So it's N E L A Z I S S E R. Um, I was gonna ask you one thing before we end this. I can't, I can't find it. But anyways, uh, last segment, and then we'll close it off. I wanted to ask you about these New Zealand slangs. So I did this with my other friend who's Australian, and um, we pulled up Australian slang, and I just said something, and you describe it as to how how you think okay. the definition is and i'll tell you if it's accurate okay so yeah these are really interesting uh words so togs what is togs togs is like swimming like swimming suit that's such an interesting word <laughs> togs okay yeah, no one says swimsuit here everyone will just say togs did you get your togs <laughs> Wait, what's an axe? I don't yeah, even know how. Bring, bring your togs. <laughs> yeah, right. Bring your togs. Like, we're, we're going to go swimming, bring your togs. You don't really have a New Zealand accent, right? You said that earlier that you're. Um. So to New Zealanders, I sound American. But to Americans, I sound New Zealand, okay. I find. Like, people okay. have told me that. Because I, I, I don't think New Zealand has, like, a really, really distinct accent. Like, you know when, like, you go to Australia. No, they, oh, they do. They do sometimes. Not as bad as Australia, but it depends. Like, if you listen to, like, our news reporters and stuff, they're pretty, like, the accent is, is quite harsh. You sound like you're almost, like, 30% American, 30%, like, British. And then, like... Yeah, potentially. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, 40% a mix of, like, Australian and, like, something else. Like, yeah, just all probably because of, like... I think these days, like, people watch so much things on, like, YouTube and oh, stuff, yeah. so you kind of get your accent from whatever you watch as well. That's true. I didn't even think about that. Because I, I have a niece that's six years old, and then she's always on YouTube. So I'm curious as to, that's probably how she got yeah, like, how her so accent it. turns out. Yeah, 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 I'm really curious about that. Um, We were, we were, we grew up in a, a weird era. I feel like the 90s kids slash, like, really, really, really early 2000, like, maybe 2000. The kids that grew up at that time, we got to see the whole evolution of, like, technology. We got to see how it was when the, without computers and stuff, which is what's yeah. crazy to me. Like, um, do you remember the first time that you, like, had computers and stuff? We'll drop, jump back yeah, into this. I was I was 12 when I, I bought my first computer. It was, like, a secondhand, like, piece of shit. Oh, yeah. Um, hell yeah. Which was a lot of money at that time. Like, that it was is a lot, lot of money. money. But, yeah, so I, I bought a really shitty computer for $500. And it was so slow, like so insanely slow. Did you have AOL? Like, wh what did you use? No, I I just used um like MSN Messenger. <laughs> like <laughs> such a piece of crap. That so you were twelve, I was seven, or seven. Yeah, yeah, I was seven. I'm trying to think. I think we had our first computer around that time too, and we we used AOL, which is like the worst thing in the world. It'll be like, eh, yeah, I don't think I ever had AOL, dude. It. It you you had to use that and wait like five to ten minutes to even go on like the internet at all, like it was miserable and it's super loud. And then finally yeah. you can oh, go on to like, yeah, and then finally you can go up to like one yeah. website or like two websites that you know. Oh man! All right, so hopping back, um, what is jangles or jandles? Jandals, like um, flip-flops, flip-flops wow. to you guys. Jandals are like, yeah, what you'd wear to the beach. Um, Okay, some of these What do you just... call them in America? Do you just call them flip-flops? Yeah, we just call them, or yeah, flip-flops. I don't know why it says thongs in here. I don't know who calls them thongs. Oh, thongs. I, I've never like really heard anyone call them thongs, but I have heard of that. A lot of your guys' uh slang that is on this website, at least, is a lot of like surfer slang in America. Like stoked oh, really? and then, like bro. Well, there's a lot of surfers here. That makes a lot of sense. We probably got that from you guys. Like, eh? Yeah. Um, what is a dooney or a dunny? A what? I don't know how to pronounce it. It's dooney or dunny. It's D-U-N-N-Y. 
Dunny. Okay. You ever heard so of you don't that know one? that one? Okay. So on here, sure. on this website, it says a toilet. <laughs> I don't really oh, know. Oh, a dungy. Oh, a dungy. Dungy. What? Yeah, it's like it's the kind of toilet like if you imagine like an outhouse, like if there's like a, oh. a long drop toilet. Oh, I've heard it be used in that terms, like a dungy. Do you guys have those like around? Um, yeah. So if it's like a more like rural area, yeah, or like Ooh. just if someone decides they want a long drop, they want to be a bit more, you know, interesting. Economical, they want a long drop. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is uh wop wop wops? Oh, and it's like rule. So if you live in the Wop Wops, you'll have a dungy. Dude, that's such a cool. Okay, if you live in the Wop Wops, you got a dungy. Like, I wish I could speak like this. That's awesome. These words are so wild. I can't even imagine like someone who's not from America hear the words that we come up with. Especially like hood slang. Like if you're in like the rural, uh, not the rural, but like the um the the more ghetto areas, and you come up with the slangs that are like really hard to um. It's like an example. I know. I'm trying to think of one right now. Oh, like uh, cap, cap. Do you guys use cap? Like no cap, cap. cap. Yeah. So cap. All right. This is a newer one. This is like, a, it's become prevalent at least in the last year. So cap means uh bullshit. Like you're lying. And then no cap means nah. I'm not lying. Like no bullshit. Okay. Yeah. That's on TikTok. I've seen that used on TikTok. Yep. It's a lot of stuff like that. Like I remember, uh, they go through phases though, because I remember like back when I was growing up, there was like swag, like all the uh, YOLO. Oh, we had that New Zealand. Yeah. It's yeah, we had all that ugh, New Zealand. So cringy to think about now. Uh, what's a Jaffa? A uh, Jaffa is an Aucklander. I think like a. A Jaffa, so it's like you're you're brown on the inside, but you're white on the outside. So it's like a moldy or Pacific person who acts like a white person and lives in Auckland. That is so specific. That is like the most specific slang ever. What you're does like, it say on there? Um, <laughs> just another fucking or fantastic Aucklander. He all yeah. and then they gave me an example. He's like he always orders a s- spicy soy chai latte. A total Jaffa. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Okay, give us a couple of snags off the Barbie, will you? A whole. That's, uh, give us a few hot dogs, like sausages off the barbecue. Oh, so snags is hot dogs or like hot dogs. sausages? Sausages, yeah, sausages. Mm. What's he's a muppet? He's a he's a loser. He's an idiot. You know. I like that one. I could use that in American slang. That's dope. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of funny. Of course, I can do it. It's a piece of piss. It's easy. <laughs> Too That's easy. such a wild one. Um, let's see if there's any funny one. <laughs> this one's funny. You're such an egg. You're like you're an idiot. You're stupid. <laughs> so I much like a muppet. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see one last one. If there's any good one, hmm. I want to see another funny one. That's not that funny. She's such a dag. Ugh, that's grotty. Mm, that's kind of. Yeah, that's gross. Disgusting. Okay. I think we kind of got all the like really funny ones. I think the funny rest ones. are just like meh. That's cool though. Um, do, is there any American slang that you've heard of on the, like TikTok or something that you're confused about? Um, all the yeah, probably the the cap no cap thing. So I always saw it in comments. I was like, what are people talking about? And they'll be like, like oh, they'll put the emoji. It's like no, and it's just a hat, and you're just like, what? So like, no cap is no bullshit. Yep, no bullshit. Uh, do you do you go on TikTok often? Yeah, I I like TikTok. Not too often. I kind of go through periods where I like spend a lot of time on TikTok, but I don't know why, yeah. but I can't get into it. Like, I don't know if I'm just an it's old It's very head. good if you're kind of like if you're bored and you just like want to like most my TikTok now has so many like basically my front page just has a lot of animal videos, like Oh, it's mostly like animal stuff. They that's what they <laughs> they feed you. I've gotten into some weird Yeah, cuz I like those videos. So if you look at my like stuff, it's all animals. So. Mm. You're a big animal lover. Who's your favorite? What's your favorite animal? Oh, that's difficult. I love I love all animals. I'm very like, I I had a rat growing up called Kiro Barros after Card Captors, and he was so cute. He used to come to school in my little pocket, and I gave him like McDonald's and stuff. He was very fat. Was wait, fat wait, wait, wait. First he of lived all, a very long time. First of all, you could bring a rat to school. Yeah, I went to a very like kind of new age school. Oh, that's so. Cool. <laughs> I didn't really give a shit. And then second. They can eat McDonald's. I mean, I'm sure they can eat anything. I just like... gave him little nibbles of the burger bit, like just a little tiny nibbles, just because oh he loved it so much. Did he you got grow... so excited. Did you grow up with him. a lot of pets? <laughs> yeah, I grew up with. Um, I used to breed rabbits, guinea pigs, 
rats, mice, cats. I had a few dogs, never bred dogs though. Oh my God. Um, I had chickens, I had uh, frogs, I had birds. I had, a, I raised a duck once. My friend found a few baby ducks in like a gutter and he what? took one and his brother took one and gave one to me. My one was the only one that lived and then I got to release it when it was an adult. I used oh to give it little God. baths and it lived with my rabbit. I had a rabbit called That's Clover so and it like, it lived with my rabbit in the cage. <laughs> Wait, so do you, do you guys just like all have like farmland or something? Where do you keep all these animals? No, I, I lived on like a, I lived in a real shitty house growing up, but we had like a decent yard and it was kind of on top of a hill, which there was a lot of farmland. We didn't live on the farmland, but we had like a very big like yard. So I had a lot of room for like hutches and stuff. Okay. You said you had a, a, a shitty like house when you were growing up right uh yeah. what was your upbringing like in general so, sorry oh. we're completely off topic now and very, i thought i was gonna end it i grew but... up very poor uh -huh. like compared to what i'm like now i grew up very poor like uh my mom was a single parent uh on the dpv which is like benefit and yeah yeah, yeah we're we're yeah. the same way we um we grew up like terribly poor we just came from vietnam and yeah. didn't have anything i reckon it means you like you appreciate stuff more when you like kind of do things for yourself and you earn money and you kind of become successful it means a lot more oh yeah 100 percent. are you like do you live on your own now um no so i actually look after my mom oh that's she's so retired she's awesome. 65 that's so awesome she's 65 so she had you when she yeah. was like 36 30 yeah 37 i think wow that's late in the game that's kind of cool that's pretty yeah. awesome. Do you do you plan on having kids with the or with the boyfriend? Of course. Uh, wait, 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 Giovanni. Giovanni. Uh, Giovanni. Wait, wait. Um, definitely, definitely not now. Like I feel like yeah, I'm yeah. definitely not ready for. Like I know I'm 29, but I don't feel ready for children no. at all. Like there's a lot of things I want to do, like career wise and traveling and stuff before Dude, I kind of think about that. I hate that the pressure for women. I hate that there is a pressure for women. Like that there's an age actual pressure um because my my uh cousin is 29 turning 30 so she's like the exact same age as you and um that's like a thing that you have to think about but if you're like new age and like a honestly a lot i noticed this in the cities like if you're in the big cities a lot of people don't even think consider kids until they're uh like early 30s i noticed yeah i reckon it's better like live your life first and like have a life have time to yourself because once like i don't want to have children and not give them kind of my all like i'd rather if i do have children i'm gonna like make sure they have a good life and you kind of like you don't focus on yourself anymore yeah damn kind of situation your kids are definitely gonna have a good life their mom's gonna be a doctor <laughs> if, if they exist we'll oh see. yeah <laughs> that's true that's true putting it out there they're gonna you're gonna be a doctor a uh, freaking youtuber competitive eater and then what is giovanni He's an investment banker. He works for like a small investment bank. Perfect. Does like, uh, like he like sells like buys and sells companies, especially like forests. Oh wow, that's crazy! Actually, that's a really uh, tough field to be in. Yeah, he's really good at it though. He's very smart. Like he is, I'd say he's at least like twenty times smarter than I am. <laughs> Wait, you're um, I know I know that you're really 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 big into the earth and like uh, environmental, which I love because you you did the competition for that. And yeah, what got you into that? Um, I think I've always like kind of cared about the environment and especially like animals and just yeah, like I hate to see people too. Like I hate to see animals or people or anyone like hurt. Like I'm very like emotional when it yeah. comes to that kind of stuff. I feel like New Zealand's probably so much cleaner than here. No. Oh really no? Not. Are they we not like environmentally? To, the whole Conscious. The whole government likes to say, "Oh, clean, green New Zealand," but our recycling is is terrible. Really? Um, people litter everywhere. Like, luckily, like we have like a really good like government who kind of like picks it up and stuff. But New Zealanders are terrible with like rubbish and recycling, and we're actually oh. not as clean and green as the government tells people we are. I would have uh, never have guessed that. I I was thinking New Zealand was like super earth conscious. No. We need to all. There's hop lots of people who are. There's lots of people who are. Yeah. But I'd say there's a decent amount that just don't care and it's quite sad we need to all adopt the japanese model and just keep everything yeah. clean as fuck because <laughs> yeah. apparently like it's like a sin to throw trash there like people will all yeah. like ostracize yeah there's them. no trash cans that's one thing i noticed like i'd go to like a store or something get some food and i'd, I'd have to carry my trash around with me in new zealand no, no no in japan really in japan there's no trash cans yeah like, I didn't see one. I didn't see a single trash can the whole time I was there. I heard the opposite. It was nuts. I thought that there was trash oh, cans really? everywhere. No, you, you take your rubbish home and then you throw it away. 
What the fuck? Unless I just missed them, like, because I did not see a single trash can. You know, conspiracy theory, it could be they want you to do that so that you can grab less stuff so that you're not. Yeah, it could be. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Well, thank you for uh, coming on the podcast. I think that's everything. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was it's so awesome that you um you're so open to collaborations. I think that's so cool. Uh, I, I love. It. I find it very cool. It's like nice to be able to do that. That's great. Uh, we'll we'll do. We should do another collaboration sometime. Um, I'd be very keen. We can do like a. <laughs> you like spicy food, so we can do something with spicy, spicy food. We can do spicy <laughs> food, and um, I'll I'll I can pick it, and I'll I'll send it out. Wait, Amazon works there, right? Yeah, like I think it so. Works Most, everywhere. Some, some some of them work. Ooh, some of them. Interesting. Yeah, some some Amazon ships to Zealand, some doesn't. I'll send you something off of Amazon and then we'll both do it or try it or something. Oh like sweet. That. I'm very keen. Right. Awesome. Keen it, keen just means like you're you're down, right? Yeah. Oh, that's another New Zealand slang. There you go. Keen means have... like yes, I'm um do you guys not use it there? No. It's it's oh, a, I think damn. that's a British. I've been using thing. it to emails to people in like other countries. I assumed everyone used it. <laughs> I think that's a, like I think English people use it, like British. Okay, people. that's good. That's good. At least maybe some people understood it. <laughs> that's so funny. I, keen I, just I, means like I'm very down. I'm very very okay. keen. Okay. Yeah, I think Australians use it too. Now that I'm thinking about yeah, it. I think my they Australian do. friends. Wow, is Australian and New Zealand culture similar? Yeah, it's very similar. Like, I think New Zealanders and Australians like to say, oh, yeah, we're quite different, but we're essentially very similar. That's like, why you guys are all so chill. Different. You guys are all so chill. My friend is, um, his name is Mitch Luther. He makes music. You actually should listen to oh, it. No. Amazing music. Yeah, send me a link. And I got I'll listen you. To it. Uh, but yeah, you guys are very similar. You guys are both very chill people. Thank you for coming on the podcast. And yeah, everybody oh, follow thank her. Thank you. Follow her on Instagram. Follow her on YouTube. All of it is just your name, right? Yeah, it's just my name. Everything's just my name. <laughs> N-E-L-A space Z-I-S-S-E-R, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Nailed it. <laughs> Thank you, Nella. See you guys next Thank week. Thank you. I'm going to cut everything off. <laughs>